Hello and welcome back to Sigma Dimensions. This is Yasin, and today we'll learn how to create a front end for a BIM application all in pure Python. We'll be using Streamlit, which is a Python framework allowing us to easily build and deploy data apps really fast. So let's demonstrate the app first. We can browse files, open them up. We can even change the project name. Hello world. Hit apply and some balloons pop up. That's for fun, of course. We then have a viewer made with IFC.js. It's blazing fast. We have no properties yet, but if we double click, we get a JSON response and we format this into tables here. Then we have the model quantities. We've created a little pandas data frame that we can either download as CSV or download to Excel. We can also review the quantities by looking at a nice graph here for different uh, quantity sets and for different types of quantities. We can choose to split by type or by level. Then we have the model health where we see the highest object counts in our uh, file. And this shows that there's something probably that can be optimized. And then here we have the building objects count. We can then see how many work schedules we have. And depending on the schedule, we'll see the tasks. Same for the cost schedules. We can even add cost schedules. Hello world. Add schedule. It refreshes and we have a nice schedule here. It still doesn't have any cost items, but hey, we're not going to create everything. If you wanted to do this with IFC, you can use Blender BIM today. So without further ado, let's switch to code. So to get started, go to GitHub and search for IFC 101 course. Clone this repo. Although we only need episode 9, but hey. Then open up a command prompt and wherever you'd like, just clone this repo. Now, if we cd to IFC 101 course, episode 09, streamlit. IFC template, we need to first install the dependencies uh, of this application. So we'll do pip install our requirements dot text. I already have the requirements. Then we'll just do streamlit run homepage dot pi. And here we go we have our app running. However, there's only the viewer, but the quantities and the health is empty. And we'll create this together. The rest, you can try to study on your own. And the IFC.js part is also an interesting one to study if you'd like to look at the JavaScript code a little bit. So let's start coding our application. If we go to the Streamlit IFC template, you'll find in here a Pages folder, a Tools folder, then a home page file, some instructions, and the requirements we executed earlier. In our home page, uh, you can see we have some basic code here, and if we'd like to run this application, we'll type Streamlit run homepage.py with the new window launched we can put this side by side so we can look at our code and at the same time look at the changes whilst we edit our code okay so here we're going to add in our main function 
a component which is a markdown component and we'll write it as such our component will have the following header click on browse file to begin when we press on control save there is a uh, little thing that pops up here source file change rerun and always rerun we'll go with always rerun next we'd like to add a file uploader so we'll do file uploader equals st sidebar and this is because we'd like to place it on the sidebar otherwise we could have done st file uploader so we'll do that first actually choose a file when we press save it tells us that this can only be called once because I'm not actually executing this as part of my function okay here we go so now we can browse files and upload them great the problem is if we go back to this page we'll notice our file has disappeared so the way to, to fix this is to put this in the session state. So the session state is a way to, to keep variables in between page changes, such that if we change a page and go back to the previous one, the variables that are in the session state won't disappear. And if we just attribute a key to this uh, component, such as file uploader, it will be part of the session state and whenever we upload a file would like to actually call a certain function which we'll call callback upload so as soon as there is a file that's uploaded a function called callback upload will be executed and this function will have um, the following code which is basically the session state is file uploaded equals true so we'll go if is file uploaded in st session state and st session state is file uploaded then we'll send a message saying success file is loaded and I'll also write, you may now reload a new file. Let's refresh. Let's upload it again. And it says, file is loaded. You may now reload a new file. And we'd like to place this in the sidebar, we said. So we'll just add here, sidebar.fileuploader. We'll do the same for the success message and the reload message. So now they're on the left-hand side great we go to this page and come back we see that our file is still loaded and it tells us we may reload a new file we can also add emojis to our application so I'm going to search for uh, reload and I like this one I'll copy it and I'll put it here as you can see it's not part of our application Superb. Okay, so what if we'd like to open our file with IFC Open Shell? So that's what we'll do. We'll import IFC Open Shell. And then uh, in our callback function, what we'll do is we'll store this in a variable called IFC file. And we'll do IFC Open Shell open. No, sorry. IFC Open Shell file from string. dot file from string and the string will be the session state uploaded file let's give a bit more room here we'll have to get the value for this and also decode it to UTF-8 and only then We'll be able to have an IFC open shell object 
which we can then use as session state IMC file by type IMC project take its name it says there's no IFC file in our session state so this is because um, okay yeah it's because we are saying that the session states uploaded file is called the uploaded file but here we named it file uploader let's refresh uh, we do not have an IFC file okay that's because we actually need to execute the callback function once more here we go so it's called project number which is strange but I'll prove it to you so project name equals then st write project name you see the project name is project number this is really bad so let's create something to start changing the name of our project so we'll do column one column two equals st columns two and then with column one we'll put this and with column two we'll say st text input and we'll also add a little button to say uh, apply we'll give this a key as well so that it becomes part of our session state We'll call it uh, project name input and the apply button will be um, key project name apply. What does it say? Apply M. Ooh la la. Okay. So now every time there is an input such as this when we press apply we'd like it to change this project name here so we'll create a function whenever we click on this button which is called change project name so we haven't yet created this function change project name pass let's remove the error we're back so whenever we're here would like to get our IFC file retrieve the IFC project entity and change its name to the session state what did we call it project name input to the session state project name input let's try it apply wow it worked hello world sweet let's move on we'll create a little function which is called get project name here get project name we'll cut this actually no we'll copy this get project name and we'll just return return the session states IFC file project entity and we'll get just the name value so we'll replace this by project name equals get project name we'll make it a bit shorter here we go save this refresh everything works fine let's check check apply Woo! so whenever we also change the name of our file what we'd like to do is put some balloons in our scene Woo! okay and if we come back everything is fine 
Actually, it's not. Oh, yeah. Because we have an error here that says array buffer does not exist. Let's create this st session state array buffer equals the session states uploaded file, but only the value. We only get the value. We won't decode this so that we only get the array buffer. And this is something that ifcjs needs here to. Um, to actually read our file so let's execute the callback option again and here we go our loader works fine now we double click somewhere we have some quantities it's all nice and sweet look at this beauty okay let's go back to the home page so we're finished with this page for the moment let's now create a few pages here we'll create the first page, which is the quantities.py script, and it'll just show up magically here. Thank you, Streamlit. We'll have a health.py script, which will bring up a new page called health. Let's begin with the health one, which is pure IFC open shell, and there is no uh, pandas here. However, we're going to import from tools will import IFC helper. We'll also import streamlet as st. So we have the model health and in here we'll have the model quantities. So we'll change this to quantities and we now have model health and model quantities. Okay so we have a little something to start with. In the model health I'd like to show two graphs and those graphs will be Will be in the first row of our app and so that will be column oh sorry st columns two and with column one we'll have graph one and in column two we'll have the graph two okay so as you can see this resize correctly so we need to import from tools the graph maker and I've made your life a bit easier by writing some code ahead of here ahead of time which nicely styles our graphs and also uses the IFC helper tool to get certain data and plot all of this for you. So there are two graphs the high frequency entities graph and the just the building elements graph so that's for the first graph and in here we'll put that and magically it just writes it we'll do nearly the same for that and instead of get elements graph it'll be get high frequency entities graph and here we go here's the second graph now beneath this we want to see how many work schedules we have we'll create again a new row with column one and column two the one with the work schedules and another side with the cost schedules uh, if you've followed a bit of uh, the previous tutorials on ifc you'll know that we can retrieve the ifc work schedule entities from our file variable by using the by type method and if you do so and write this information you'll see that we do have or may not have yeah we do have some work schedules so we've got two work schedules sorry my bad this was for work schedules and that's for work schedules there are none, unfortunately. But don't worry, we'll create something that creates cost schedules as well. Just to, to discover things a little bit. Right, so now we have two graphs. And every time we leave this page and come back, these graphs get generated from scratch. So we have two options. Either we cache this or we just use session state variables. I'll use session state variables. 
even though this also takes in uh, space in your memory. So I'm going to create a function called load data and within this function called load data if IFC file in ST session state then we'll create some graphs okay I've, I'm tired of writing ST session state so I'm just gonna replace it with session equals ST session state and we'll change all of this session Tuk, 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 tuk. So if IFC file in session, session graphs equals, so we'll have the, we said the objects graph, which we retrieved with graph maker up flat then we have the high frequency graph graph maker get high frequency graph in here instead of doing that as such we'll do session graphs objects We'll load the data. And technically, if we now remove this and press save, this should pop up. Let's change the space, let's bring it back. This comes up quickly and the rest comes up slowly. So this seems to work. We'll do the same here for high frequency graphs and remove that and we'll do a new function called load work schedules and in here session sequence data will have a dictionary that contains schedules tasks okay now what we can do is let's see how many schedules we have number of schedules equals session sequence data and we'll look for schedules and we'll take the length when we refresh it says we don't have any sequence data why not because our work schedules aren't being loaded so let's load our work schedules so let's do number of schedules Two. We have two. Oh, that's great. Let's try and do the same for cost schedules, but this time we'll create a function called load cost schedules and we'll call it cost items. I see cost item and I see cost schedule. Now, cost data, and this will be called cost data Let's refresh something's wrong what is wrong schedules schedules or is it cost schedule is it task load cost schedules and we'll load it as well Ooh, can't do it as such. F. Okay. In order to create a uh, drop down item, we're going to need a select box which we'll call schedules. And its key will be the schedule work schedule selector it's missing an argument which is called options and in the options we'll put nothing now in order to get 
the cost schedules in here and we'll also try and keep the object ID we'll create a variable called schedules and that will be so for work schedule in session sequence data schedules or an empty list I don't know we'll write the following string which contains the work schedule or let's change this to sequence data and that will be work schedule name and slash work schedule ID and now if we replace the options with this we'll see that we have a nice drop down with our work schedule star selectable if we need to get the value of the currently selected select box item let's print it out in our console um, session work schedule selector and when you print this you'll see that we have that work schedule selected we'll go to the next one if you print it it's unnamed 80745 let's go back to the first work schedule and so on so if we need the schedule ID we'll need to split this thing here so we'll do session state work schedule selector but we'll actually split it with this uh, um, with this character, and we'll take the second part of our string. And this will only be done when the session state has schedule selector else none. it has a work schedule selector sorry and in here it will print the ID let's see if it works it does hooray we'll also make sure this is an integer so as not to pass any strings okay great so if schedule ID then the schedule is session IFC file by ID schedule ID and we have a nice helper function that says IFC helper get schedule tasks of this specific schedule and so if we have any tasks we'll write st info and we'll format this as number of tasks length of tasks so we have 42 tasks now to get the task data we'll do task data equals IFC helper get task data tasks and we'll just put a table containing all this task data save this refresh superb we have a list of all our tasks with their schedule start and schedule finish now you can imagine you can also build an application that updates the actual start and actual finish we just need to think about it a little so if we don't have any tasks we'll write instead a little warning that says no tasks and I have a little smiley here that is sad whenever there are no tasks just like in this work schedule so next we can uh, look at 
the column two. And you can imagine we can do the same. And this will, there are no helper functions for cost items, etc. So I hope you'll get to, to deal with it on your own. But I'll kick you off in the right direction. We have none, unfortunately. So this is where we're going to add a little sidebar. And in our sidebar, we'll add a text input and a button to add cost schedules with the name of our text input. So we'll work on the sidebar part. So in here, what we would ideally like to do is create something that says, um, so in the sidebar, we'll write a header saying cost scheduler. And the cost scheduler will also have a text input, schedule name, and we'll write as cost input. That will be the key. We'll add a button that says add schedule, and this will be add schedule button. And when we click on this, we need to add a cost schedule. So let's create this function. For this, we need the IFC helper add cost schedule. We'll pass in the session. Uh, what is it? What did we call it? Text input, cost input. We'll pass in the session, cost input. And we'll also load our cost schedules. Let's test this out. Hello, costs. Okay, IFC tool does not have an add cost schedule function. Is that so? Tools, IFC helper. Um, where is it? Oh, it's called create cost schedules. Create cost schedules. And we need to, oh yeah, sorry. We need to pass in the file and the file name. So we'll do session IFC file, session cost schedules. So this loads again. Hello, costs. Amazing. And I really, really like to add balloons. So we'll add balloons as soon as everything is loaded. Hello costs number two. There we go. Now, so if we refresh this, we get an error that says the session state has no attribute IFC file. And this happens when we try to load the work schedules and load the data. So if IFC file in session, this is not indented. And there we go. Attribute, uh, it doesn't have an attribute graphs. And this is because we don't know if our data is loaded. So we'll write a, a, a something on our session state that says, is health data loaded? True. Let's search for graphs. So we'll only draw the model if is health data loaded. Actually, let's not put it here. We'll go down and say, load data. If session is health data loaded, we'll draw both of these things. If is health data in session and session is health data loaded, we'll not create a bug. So we'll 
come back here health it loads it fine home page will come back comes back fine okay let's add schedule again Woo! <laughs> Okay, so let's switch over to the quantities page. So for our quantities, we want to have some tabs. In here we'll say tab one, tab two, and it'll be named data frame utilities. And here we'll name it quantities review. So with tab one, we'll write a little header that says data frame review then we'll write our data frame to it and here we don't have the data frame yet so I'll create this variable called oh sorry we don't have the variable called session yet so session equals session state so the data Okay, so I'll create a little function that's called get IFC pandas and it uses the IFC helper to get the object's data and then to create the data frame we'll return it directly. Okay, so we can get IFC pandas. Oh my god, magically here. Go, 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 stream lit. The good thing here is that we can now just create a button that says button download CSV and again we'll create a function here called download CSV and I've already prepared this for you and it's just pandas helper dot download csv you pass in the session file name first and then the session data frame and we don't have this yet so we'll import it from tools we have our pandas helper and let's check this function right here it says no sorry pandas helper download csv and it will place it in a downloads folder which we don't have yet so let's create it the downloads folder now let's press download csv this does not name because we don't have a file name state variable and we need to create that in our um, home page so here we'll create a session state variable called file name and it'll be the uploaded file name now unfortunately we need to execute all of this again because this was part of the callback upload that only happens when the file uploader changes states so we'll browse the file again Oof. uploaded file has no attribute name this is because it shouldn't be a caps lock attribute and here we go if we go back to our data frame review and press download it says the session state does not have any data frame sorry this was in capital letter data frame data frame data frame let's try it again okay downloads mad scientist csv let's do a save as excel so we'll copy all of that and here write download excel download excel copy all that download excel let's make sure we do have this in our tools the pandas helper download excel great 
Let's try it out. And ta-da! We now have a data frame review. Now let's work on the quantities review part. This is getting crowded. And our quantities script. As you can see, we're barely writing any code and we're getting a lot of things done here. So now we'll work on the hardest part, which is working with selectors and all of that. And it, it can become quite confusing with the session states and everything. But if you look at a certain video that I'll be posting in the description, it will help you understand how callbacks and session states work in a more detailed explanation in case mine was not clear. In these columns, the left hand side will have the options and on the second column we'll have the graph all right so how do we work with these options so let's create a class selector and we'll this will be a select box which says select class and we don't yet have a list of classes so we'll just say options empty list key is the class selector and so the classes are little pandas magic data frame class value counts keys to list to list and so our options are then like this. Or up. So here we go. We have a list of classes. Now that are available in our file. Now we need to add A filter data frame and we'll store this in our session state as well pandas helper filter data frame for class and the class will be well the data frame we're filtering is the current data frame and we'll pass in the session class selector and let's see if this exists. Yeah, we have a filtered data frame. Actually, let's just print it out in our screen. There it is. Then if we want to retrieve the QTOs, session QTOs we're again gonna help use the pandas helper and say get Q set columns and it will be the previous filtered frame that we were talking about here and if everything went fine we should be able to see some QTOs, yeah. Be great. So this will be another selector. Let's refresh this. 
great let's remove this pandas data frame that crowds our screen let's stop writing the QDOs now we're cooking okay so that's great we come back this still exists it updates Now for the quantities, maybe we don't have QTOs. So what we can do is say, if session QTOs is not none to get the list of quantities for this uh, quantity set will use the pandas helper once more and it goes like this we also needed a uh, some radio buttons to choose between the type or the level so it'll be split per level and type the key here will be split options and if there's nothing if there are no QTOs we'll raise a warning that says no quantities ask your file issuer to export some and then simply here we're going to draw the frame if we have a quantity selector in the session if the session quantity selector is equal to count because i've added a uh, attribute here called count which does not exist in the in the normal list of quantity sets but this was just to be able to count the elements so if it's equal to count we'll get the total of the quantities so no it's not get quantities it's get total session filtered frame st write total you see we have a total here that shows up count 84. For the others, we'll load in a graph. We need to first put in the filtered frame, then the QTO selector, then the quantity selector, and last but not least, how we would like to split this up. And we have a problem because there is no graph maker imported so we'll import it from tools import graph maker it says uh, we do not have a attribute called qto select this is because it has an s let's now plot the graph Ta -da. okay so th there may be issues in trying to um, open new files if they don't have certain information so the the data frame will not be cleared or the um, classes are not selected so in the final project i suggest you open up the file and read how the home page is made how the quantities is made and how the health is made it's nearly the same as what we've done but contains um, some extra functions to initialize the session state and also to empty the session state variables when the file upload is changed yeah i suggest you just look at all this and uh Try to learn, try to bug a little bit, try to solve your things and study this code. 
if you also need to know the little details of how the IFC helper works uh, how the data gets formatted how it's retrieved some of these things have been covered in previous tutorials others um, haven't been but yeah discover it and have fun I hope you enjoyed learning I hope you'll get to learn more and get to create amazing open BIM applications that you can share with the rest of the world. I'll be really happy to know what you've made. So let me know. I invite you to subscribe to this channel. Goodbye.